Howdy, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, Jessica in Progress. My name is Jessica, and today we're going to be going over everything that I read in August, which is actually quite a lot, surprisingly. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into it, and we'll start with Garden of the Cursed by Katie Rose Poole. Uh, starting off, I loved Garden of the Cursed. It was one of my favorite books I read this month. Yeah, one of my favorite books that I read this month. It is a young adult fantasy novel. We, we follow our main character, Marlo, as she has left high society since her mom disappeared about a year ago. And she became a curse breaker and a really good one at that. Now our story starts off when her old best friend and crush, who kind of like turned on her and just abruptly stone faced stopped talking, uh, shows up at her apartment um, and is just like, hey, I've been super cursed. Can you help me? And then we go through her figuring out the curse um, and then being secret about it because they don't want anyone to find out as well that he has been cursed. There's a bit of fake dating in here as well, which is really interesting considering their past. I love the side characters in this. And then the ending was truly phenomenal. One thing that I wish that we had seen more in it a little bit would have been like the high society-ness because it kind of just montaged through the high society week that they went through as they were planning for Adrice's, the guy's sister's wedding. Um, and they just kind of like breezed past that. We uncover a lot of secrets and I really like the very light magic system that we have in here. I also like the different representations of everyone that is out in this book. I found that the characters were very strong um, and I overall super enjoyed this book. I am anxiously waiting for the next one, um, which sucks for me because this is this just came out it's gonna be like a year anyway the next one we read famous for a living by melissa ferguson now as you can tell by this little sticker here we got this in our once upon a book club book pick for whatever month it was that i did i mean i did a whole reading vlog on it um anyway this follows a older influencer she is like one of the first influencers you know like a established older influencer uh in instagram she's kind of like lived her whole life in there a scandal pops out because she signed a bad deal right and then she goes to we wait out the bad press and wait for her legal issues to kind of get flowing and she goes to kind of redo her image at her uncle's national forest they have a smaller national forest in montana and she goes there to kind of hide away but also be their new digital media marketing strategist person um at the same time there is a grumpy grumpy guy who hates everything about social media and it is pitched really as an opposites attract romance but for me, I felt it more on the fixing the rundown business in Old Town Hallmark movie with a dash of romance because I wish we had gotten more of the romance out of it. But I really did enjoy the here are the side characters, here's us fixing, you know, the rundown national park, here's us bringing attention and bringing people to our old town and, you know, all of the little people that were there, old vibe, town vibes. I also like how the characters changed and grew because sometimes with opposites attract, you're just like, okay, well, it's opposites attract, which means someone is going to have to give in the relationship more. Um, and I think it handled it quite well based off of where the people were in their lives and their past. I overall liked it if you want like a cute, cozy winter read, okay? This is, I would, I would tell you to read this around Christmas time. Because uh, even though this little cover says springtime, it is snowing the whole time book. So yeah, overall, I enjoyed it a lot. 
Um, it was a nice little cozy finish in a day, little cozy romance thing. Yeah. Um, I did wish that I was not 107,000 degrees outside, <laughs> um, so I could have, uh, you know, read it with a hot cocoa. The next book we read was Mortal Longings by Chloe Gong. I've already talked about this book over an hour in this uh, little video that I'm going to link right here. Um, but overall, I gave it two stars. I think it has potential. Chloe Gong was just doing too much with this book and not picking anything to focus on. If she had picked one thing to focus on, I think it would have been a lot better, but she was trying to do a lot of setup, a lot of world building, and a lot of failed attempts at romance. <laughs> um, and also, you know, a battle to the death game. It was just too much for her to handle in this book, especially since she didn't have a focus. It kind of seemed like all of her main themes took backstage place. Um, and no one was sitting in the foreground, which was really disappointing. Um, the world building is solid enough, kind of, though, for me to go on to the next one. Um, but I'm gonna, you know, I would not suggest anyone reading this book until the next one comes out. Because it could be, you know, the first book is bad, but the rest of it is good, or it could be a show of everything else. This is my first Chloe Gong, so I don't know fully her style of writing, but in this one for sure she just takes too much and doesn't develop it enough. <laughs> and I think she either, again, she needed to either focus on one thing or drop one thing. And I think it would have been better. It also was just so slow to get through. Like, it is a little over 400 pages, I believe. But it took me so long to read. Because it was just... <sighs> it was a bit of a slog trying to world build. And all of these character point of view switchings. That I don't think were super necessary. I think this book... <clears throat> needed more time and I think it needed an editor to go in and be like okay let's move some things around make it more cohesive and make it flow better I think it just needed more time in the oven anyway we're moving on after that I read three books on my kindle the first two were the housemaid and the housemaid's secret um, I loved these books so much. <laughs> I loved them so much. Like, they were kind of trash a little bit, you know, writing style-wise. But I just, like, gobbled it up. I was living for it. Like, the psychological thriller and the twists in them were so fun. Um, the first one is definitely better than the second one. The second one takes a little bit longer to kind of set it up. Um, and it starts in such a different position where the first one left off that you're just kind of like, I would have rather had what was in the gap between the two books as opposed to the book that we got. But I absolutely... <laughs> Like, I ate those up. They were so good. They were so good. And Ryan, I was explaining the first one to Ryan because I was just like, before this part switch. So I was in part one and I had just finished it and I was explaining everything to Ryan. And I was like, this is so crazy. And I don't, and I think this is what's going on. Um, but I'm not sure. And it was, I loved it. Um... So yeah, I, I, I enjoyed those. The next book that I read on my digital little book reader thing, um, I wasn't ever planning on really reading, and I don't know why I wasn't planning on reading it, but with the Amazon movie of it coming out and me watching all of my little movie critics critique the movie, I was like, okay, fine, I'll read the book. <laughs> 
So, of course, it's Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McWiston. And I loved it as well. Uh, I just, like, I think I just needed that cute, cozy little romance for it, especially after Immortal Longings. Um, and, like, I, so, <clears throat> I used to write Scorpius Malfoy and Albus Potter slash fix. So, it made me feel like my little high school self again. <laughs> and it made me want to go back to that. Um, I think I might go back and update some of my stories. I just got a comment on one of my stories literally this morning that was like, I forgot this fic was dead. No. And it made me be like, maybe I'll do that for NaNoWriMo instead because I do want to revisit it. But at the same time, like, it's just been so long since I've been there. <laughs> and reading Red, White, and Royal Blue also made me want to look into other lesbian fiction. Um, unfortunately, there is not as much lesbian fiction as there is, you know, uh, male gay fiction. <laughs> but anyway, if you don't know, Red, White, and Royal Blue is the alternate reality uh, <laughs> uh, of the first son of America dating a prince of England and the scandal, like them doing it secretly because, you know, uh, <laughs> the royals can't be gay and also because the dude's mom is running for re-election and it could like super taint the thing. And what I really liked about it is that when it was found out, it was more about the breach of privacy than it was about, you know. And it just kind of wrapped up a little happily ever after, a little like easy, fun, slightly angsty, you know, read. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed it and I really liked it. And I know, I, I full on know that I'm going to read it again which means that I'm going to have to go and buy the physical copy of it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, trigger warning. This book does homophobia really bad. No, sorry. Trigger warnings for this book is homophobia deconstruction is, is a deconstructing from fundamentalism community. Um, very, very, very fundamentalism, religious trauma. Um, so if you don't want any of that, skip to this time. The next thing we read was Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. Now this took me a while to read and I think it was just because a lot of things was going on in my life because it's not that long. Um, Camp Damascus is, we follow Rose, Rose Darling, um, as she goes through her town Neverton. It starts off as if this super fundamentalism she so, so it's very so rose grows up in a very fundamentalistic you know christian church thing and like nothing against other christian this is fundy okay this is fundy fundamentalism you know it's extremist um, and like i just was reading the beginning of it and being like, oh my God, this was me in high school wearing the stupid Jesus walks on water lifeguard shirt, <laughs> you know, going through the gay awakening. Okay. Yeah, and Rose is going through a gay awakening, but there's a small twist on it because there's also, uh, the town Neverton kind of runs off of the fundamentalism church that also runs Camp Damascus, which is a gay conversion therapy camp that boasts a hundred percent, a hundred percent conversion with no relapse. Now, something is fishy about it because as Rose is going through her gay awakening, she vomits up mayflies. And then the first person that she was crushing on uh, gets killed by a demon that has been following Rose around. And we find out that Camp Damascus is so good at keeping people not gay by attaching actual demons to their gayness. And then it goes through Rose figuring all of this out and also, you know, 
dealing with all of that and seeing how she can it goes through her like deconstructionalism process it goes through her gay awakening it goes through like a breaking down of fundamentalism and it has like a really good balance as well as like someone where the church can do something so bad to them that they deconstruct so far and swing all the way out of fundamentalism and all the way into complete denial of any sort of godly existence. And then it also explores someone who was deep in fundamentalism, realizes that that's wrong, but chooses to stay in their religion as well. So I think, so I think it's really good for anyone. I think if you're a fundamentalist Christian, you're not going to like it. But I think if you've gone through any sort of deconstruction, you're going to love it. And I think also if you're still like Christian, but understand that religion and Christianity are very different things, you will also still like it. So, I mean, keep in mind, like it has, you know, very severe homophobia in it. Very severe, you know, Christian fundamentalism is in it. Religious trauma everywhere. I enjoyed it so much, though. Um, but I loved it. I I can't wait. I can't wait to read it again. And one thing that I know, I don't know if it meant anything, but there were a lot of Peter Pan tie-ins. And I don't know if this is like an allusion to like growing up and the trends currently happening right now where people are growing up and growing out of their religion or if it's a more play on like Peter Pan being like the demon that lives <laughs> that lures kids to their deaths but I liked all of the little Peter Pan references references is in it and like <laughs> so I I loved it. I I loved this book <laughs> Anyway, now after this, I don't know if that book put me in a reading slump or if it was because I re like I had just unboxed the latest um, owl crates from it or if and I really just wanted to pick up Masters of Death by Olivia Blake, which I'm gonna do tonight. Like I'm picking that up <laughs> and we're starting that reading vlog. Anyway, um, so in the meantime, in term, I have been listening to The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstein. Um, and then while well, I was cleaning the house and walking the dogs and all of that other stuff. I really enjoyed The Night Circus. I don't know. So I started off with it in audiobook. I read the first 75% in audio. I think the last 15% of that 75% I read tandemly. Um, which is, you know, audiobook and physical book at the same time. And then after that, I finished the last, like, 150, 200-ish pages. I don't know if any of my numbers are right there, but, but I finished it just reading. Um, and I, again, really enjoyed this book. So this book follows a night circus that just appears um in towns it just shows up one night it is only open on nights and then it moves towns uh magically it takes place in the late 1800s uh very early 19 like 1901 1902 is like i think all it gets into um and we follow a number of characters i think if i were reading it i would have picked up on the different timelines a little bit better but because i was listening to it i really didn't catch the dates of everything. <laughs> um, but we are following our main two characters are these two, um, I don't even know how to, like, our world would call them witch, wizard, magical users stuff, right? Or illusionists. She's called an illusionist. Um, and they're in a competition made by their two fathers. I really loved the Shakespeare Tempest references in it. Um, Tempest is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. As You Like It, I think, is my favorite, though. And that is, is it As You Like It? No, one second. I think it's The Winter's Tale. The Winter's Tale is my favorite Shakespeare play. And that's the one where it's just like, exit pursued by bear. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so we follow 
our main girl, who's an illusionist, who is also, uh, we also follow one of our main guys, who is also an illusionist. They are pitted against each other um, in this competition by their essential fathers. Like, the girl, it's her actual father. The guy, it's like his adopted father. Anyway, they're going through this very vague competition where they, like, enhance their skills and and they like do these moves against each other and they end up kind of building this circus together um and then we also follow these two twins um and i only remember bailey's name but we also follow bailey who is like a normal guy who gets like enhanced entranced by the circus when he's a young boy and just kind of maintains his entrancement with it and then we follow as the competition unroll unfolds as the circus gains notoriety and then also like the the love between the two of them and how close and connected they are uh not only through their like competition and abilities and all of that but also the connection that they made while building the circus together like in a response to each other um we also follow like the little characters around them who just are so well developed and I it would half of these books that I read this month I'm gonna end up reading again <laughs> and it like it was so nice and my aunt told me to read this like the year it came out but I was going to college at the time and just didn't have any time to read it and that's when I bought the audiobook for it and it just was never got it <laughs> never went to it and it took me this long to finally read it but I finally read it and we're good and again, I, I, had a, I had a really good reading month, you know, all things considered, I had a really good reading month. Now, last but not least, my Indie Store Book Club pick was a graphic novel, and we read The Hobbit. The, uh, I'm not even going to call this a graphic novel, it is an illustrated edition of The Hobbit. Um, our book club all kind of agreed that this is not the best at, like, okay, so, I think that if you already love The Hobbit, this is fun and fine. Um, the, <laughs> the runner of the bookstore book club was so angry at us for trashing on this. <laughs> and even the people who liked The Hobbit, like we had one girl in our little club who's just like, I reread all of the Tolkien books once a year. Um, and she was like, and this was not satisfying enough to be the Hobbit, I'm going to have to reread the actual book. And when I was reading this graphic novel, I was like, and of course, it's also my first time reading The Hobbit. I know a lot about The Hobbit already, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on it. But this is the first time physically reading The Hobbit. And <laughs> I was just like, I would rather read the novel. Um, I don't think it does that great a job at being a graphic novel. Now, I took an entire semester at college studying graphic novels, okay? So <laughs> when I say that I don't think it did a good job at being a graphic novel, even though I don't typically read graphic novels, I like to think that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, because this book has like three splash pages. Is that what they're actually called? I forget, but that's what I'm going to call it. It's the, you know, when it's a full page of here's just the picture and maybe like a text or whatever but like it really worked <sighs> let me just open to a random page look at all that text you know in this graphic novel <laughs> like and there's so much exposition and so much words that me being a word person and not a picture person would go three or four pages before realizing that I didn't look at the art at all because it was so exposition heavy. And like, I think, okay, so this was written in the 80s, right? This was written, drawn, and blah, 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 all in the 80s by the, bye, 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 David Wenzel, okay? And I, like, the art is great. 
definitely of its time. The watercolor is great. And I think like it's very clear that the graphic art artist had passion for the project and wanted to stay as true to The Hobbit as possible. The problem with that is, is when you switch mediums, you have to change things to fix that medium, right? Which is why movies and books never align that well, because you have to change things for that medium. This did not change enough for the medium, especially with Tolkien books being like these big fantasy look at, you know, here's everything that we ate for the dinner, here's how the path looked, look at my forest. Like it didn't, this illustrated novel did not do enough of letting the reader stop and look and take in the visual aspect of The Hobbit. So I think it kind of failed on that. Uh, again, it is just a lot of text all throughout it, but it, do it does have some good some good panel work. Um, and I'll show you my favorite panel here when they're talking to Smeagol. Um, because my favorite thing about comics is when the panels break. Um, so let's get to it. So one of my favorite panels is right here. Um, with, with Bilbo's dagger kind of breaking out of the pain and into Smeagol's and in a sense of him stabbing him in the back. And I really liked that. And you can tell even just from this one alone that we did work with panel structure in this book. The problem is, is that we were just cramming so much into each page um, that we didn't give ourselves any time to breathe at all or to kind of take in what was going on. It was just jam-packed, this is what's doing, we're doing this, let's go, let's go, do The Hobbit. And it, so like, I'm just repeating myself at this point, but like the art is great in it. I just wish that the text the text didn't take over the entire book. Um, and I wish that we had done some other things for it because like me being an editor and knowing a little bit about comics was like, oh, I wish we had taken these two panels and instead of shoving them in the middle here, had just made them two back-to-back -back splash pages um, that would have worked really well to like juxtapose, juxtapose um, what was going on. Like there is, I'm just doing a deep dive into this graphic novel now. <laughs> um, like there are these two panels here where we're fighting smog. So like these two panels right here, I don't know if any of this has been <laughs> screen, but these two panels I think would have worked really well if it was like one and one. So we get like the big, here's the culmination of the battle ending. <laughs> And like even even his like last death like his whole death scene is on one page which I think is just I think we were too worried about page count when making this because uh, again there's like it's just so cramped it's just so cramped so if you're if you've already read the hobbit and you love it sure go for this but if this is, this is not your first introduction to The Hobbit. We had a lot of people in our book club that had not read The Hobbit before and thought this would be a good first impression. Um, <laughs> and even though I hadn't read it in a while, I think, <laughs> I think the Twilight graphic novel is a better adaptation. <laughs> I haven't read it in a while. <laughs> That's been my August wrap up. Uh, let me know what you guys read and if you have any opinions on the books that I read. Because um, I, I, I just would love to talk with y'all about anything in the comments or what have you. Otherwise, that's been everything. My name's been Jessica 
And remember, we are all in progress. Bye.